<coughs> excuse me. I'm such a fucking ham for those damn thumbnails, yo. But anyway, hey guys, Andy here. And once again, yes, we're at good old McDonaldo, uh, friggin' McDonald's. Uh, once again on on the Wi-Fi, the Wi-Fi. Um, just got done. Well, not just got done. Shit, it's like three o'clock. <laughs> it's been a while. Um, I'm just sipping some uh, French vanilla iced coffee because your boy's a basic bitch sometimes. But it's actually pretty nice, and I can get essentially. A large coffee for a dollar even though they have large hot coffees for a dollar now but the iced coffee has more caffeine in it and you know if I was really super you know wanted like every last drop of caffeine I'd probably get it like plain but eh, I need a little bit of cream and stuff to kind of you know make sure the stomach's not all upset because that's that's something I noticed as uh as I've gotten uh, older, is that, you know, fucking, I can't have black coffee like I used to. Shit really wrecks my stomach. And, uh, let's see. I think we're going to try something a little different today. I'm going to go into the passenger side here. I should have, before I set up the stream, sorry. Uh, it's just something I was thinking about. Um, let me just move some things around. But it's still pretty early in the stream, so I think it's I think it's okay. Yeah, let me just move everything over. So I'm just gonna set this phone right here, and I will be shit, <laughs> and I'll be right back. Like two seconds. Oh. All right. Yeah. Oh, goodness. Yeah. Woo. All right. Damn. Let's, uh, hold on. <laughs> Your boy's prepared for this live stream, let me tell you what. Uh, just got to shut this for now because, uh, I don't know. That, that lens flare is coming in pretty hard. Ah, this is nice. <coughs> Much nicer. We have... Ah, all right, cool. So top channel, top channel. All right, cool. Get that. Oh, hey, what up, Dilbert? How you doing? Oh, friggin' boat coffee. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that shit was fucking. Shit was fucking rank. Even, uh, you know, f ugh. yeah, no. <laughs> That's why I stocked up on a lot of uh, canned coffee. Uh, before we would go out to sea, you know, you know, there'd be some people that have like friggin' huge packs of it in their rack or in other storage spaces. <laughs> we had one sonar tech in particular who was very uh, particular about his George coffee, and he still kind of is, and that's kind of a, a nice little trait he has. One of his welcoming things is, uh, you know, when you first check in, uh, he gives you a warm can of Georgia coffee. I always, always thought that was just kind of a neat thing, you know. It's just, you know, as a way to greet somebody. And he's a... He's a salty boy, let me tell you what. But, uh, you know, he's got a lot, a lot of knowledge. And, you know, if you get past the, you know, kind of the old man grumpiness, you know, he's definitely a, a fountain of knowledge. You know, just a... Ooh ankle's kind of itchy, but anyway, just a nice person to, to get some, uh, just kind of listen to all his sea stories, because he's been in the Navy for a hot fucking minute, but in any event, you know, yeah, I do miss the, uh, Japanese black coffee, you know, even if it was canned coffee, which, you know, it's not gourmet, it's not like super high tier coffee, but, you know, it doesn't upset my stomach, like, uh, like the black coffee here in America does. I just, I, it's just, I don't know. Like, even if I buy it at a coffee shop, it just, like, destroys my stomach. Whereas if I get, like, the cheap-ass, you know, dollar for a gallon of black coffee from, in a can from Japan, you know, it'd be very rare. You know, it'd have to, like, my stomach would already have to be upset in order to get upset at the black coffee. 
you know, I remember, you know, I had a, a can left over and I found it one day and, uh, yeah, I never had Turkish coffee, so I don't know, but, uh, I remember I had a can of black coffee left over. I was looking through some stuff the other day. Actually, this was several months ago when I was still at my apartment, but, uh, I cracked it open because I was going to be moving soon. I figured, ah, eh, fuck it. You know, it's just black coffee. Don't worry about it like expiring or anything. I was gonna move anyway, and I didn't want to fucking lug it. So I tried it, and even after like all these years, it was still like super smooth. And it's something I hadn't really appreciated about even just basic ass black in Japan. Now, of course, you know your mileage may vary depending on what type of black coffee you get. You know, if you get like the Georgia brand or whatever, you should be fine. Uh, those are usually a little more expensive than the other brands. Um, just gotta keep in mind uh, price and everything. But you do get more coffee if you get the black coffee. You know, whether it's the slightly bigger cans or like the humongous cans for like 100 yen or 120 yen or whatever. Oh man, I would love when there'd be uh, freaking vending machine sales on the big black coffee because I usually get that and like maybe. You know, a little can of, you know, just like a little bit of cream in the coffee, just to kind of get me my uh, my sweet fix. So, damn, oh, back, it's killing me right now. But yeah, oh goodness. So, fuck, I'm spacing out. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this is kind of a random live stream. You know, I've been doing these these often just to uh, something to do. You know, it's uh, you know something to keep me keep me focused on uh, making stuff on YouTube and something I've really been enjoying. You know, uh, whereas with the whole uh, demonetization situation going on with uh, with my other channel, uh, for those who don't know. Uh, earlier this month, my channel was demonetized for duplicate content, quote unquote. Um, uh, on my channel wasn't the only one. There was a lot of other channels that were demonetized for the same same reason. And like me, they went out and uh, you know, tried to contact YouTube, and you know the YouTube response bots would still give them the same basic ass answers and. You know, it's hard getting hold of a real human with these uh, sorts of situations. So, you know, it just kind of kind of is what it is, you know. So, I've been uh, working on getting rid of some videos that could have potentially flagged the system. You know, like the Star Bomb video, the Roger Swan remastered series, stuff like that. You know, and uh, just working mostly. I'm mostly working on this channel actually. You know, I've found it's actually a lot of fun to, uh, you know, have a channel just dedicated to my personal life and stuff like that. And so it's uh, it's very freeing, so I don't have to worry about, you know, the <laughs> the monetary viability of a vlog. And you know, those these vlogs and live streams and stuff really didn't make me a whole lot of money anyway. Like you know probably get like maybe six cents on the first week it was released and then maybe a penny penny or two after that you know so it just it wasn't really financially viable for me to do it on that channel anyway because yeah for sure yeah it's definitely a learning curve with uh, with editing videos you know um, but just gotta keep on doing it, you know, that's, you know, all I gotta say about that really is just, you gotta learn the uh, the software you're using, get some practice with it. You know, for me, you know, I'd used Sony Vegas for years and years, and it wasn't until when I started up uh, college again, once I got out of the military, that I got Adobe Premiere, because you'd get a, uh, like a student discount uh, you know, if you signed up for it, so that was significantly cheaper than just getting it regularly. Um, 
so I ended up getting a student discount, and I figured, you know, I'm gonna edit videos, you know, professionally eventually. <laughs> so you know, I figured it'd be nice to learn Premiere because that's one of the big editing programs that everybody talks about. You know, they talk about Premiere and Final Cut, and I didn't have an Apple anything, and nor do I want one. I fucking hate Apple. Um, but, you know, since I didn't have Apple, I couldn't use Final Cut. And the other one was uh, Avid. That's what a lot of uh, professionals use. And that's something else I'm considering maybe dabbling a little bit into. Possibly switching from, from Premiere to that. I don't know. Um, I'll have to play around with it for a little bit. Because, again, it's, uh, it's about the same price as Premiere, maybe a tad more. And, you know, it is an older system, so it doesn't have as many of the, the cool features that, uh, that Premiere has. But it is a lot more stable, from what I've been told. Yeah, and Final Cut, you know, it can be a good program. Um, a lot of people use it, you know, whether it's, you know, amateur stuff or even some pros use it, actually. You know, even a lot of big-time YouTubers and filmmakers use Final Cut. And again, nothing wrong with it. I just don't like Apple. <laughs> um, I just don't like the way they do things. It's just, eh, just no. <laughs> it's very, very hand-holdy and, I don't know, I, I just don't like it. I don't like the aesthetic of it. But you know what? If it works for you, awesome. You know, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that you're wrong for using Apple. It just doesn't work for me. So, that's all I got to say about that. You know, because I know some Apple fanboys are, you know, like, oh my god, if you're not running Apple, you're an idiot. Or some kind of Linux Windows machine or whatever the fuck else. Yeah, don't even get me started on Linux. Linux is a whole other fucking... fucking car shit, basically. Ugh. Although I have heard it's improved over the years, but... When I was studying Linux uh, back when I was an ITD tech, long ass time ago, so again things could have changed between then and now but last time I used it was fucking Red Hat and I just call it Ass Hat because it was just so fucking terrible um, but again could have changed but I don't really have a use for it so eh, whatever um, ah, fuck what was I gonna say oh yeah the title of this uh, this live stream like where were we at? Like almost 13 minutes in. <laughs> it's been kind of a random, random ass start to the live stream. But, uh, you know, why I'm, you know, looking forward to, uh, to 2019, you know. And that is, uh, I feel like a big wave of change is coming in 2019. Um, 2018 was also a wave of change, but for a different reason. You know, I felt like 2018 was kind of my rebuilding phase in a lot of ways you know you could say rebuilding my channel into separate channels for the different type of content that I have uh, you could also say taking a break from college for a bit to kind of figure my shit out you could also say that it was you know the start of my you know doing freelance video editing on a lot more of a, of, of a serious basis versus just kind of helping out a friend every once in a while like it was doing before you know like with guys like you know Eric Surf 6 and Brian from Ramen Adventures and a couple little one-off gigs here and there um, I feel like I've really uh, grown as an editor and you know I'm looking forward to working with those guys a lot more they're looking forward to working with me a lot more and uh, we'll just progress from there and I'm using the money that I make from doing freelance stuff to help cover little expenses as well as put away some money to save up to go back to Japan. Because, you know, as I've said in my other live streams, my goal is to go back to Japan uh, this coming year, 2019. Whenever you're watching this, this live stream. Mm. <laughs> so, 2019, I feel, is the year that I'm going to be going back to Japan. Now, of course, stuff could happen. You never know, such is life. You know, I don't want to get your hopes up and say, you know, all this other stuff. But, you know, because, you know, stuff happens. Like I said, it's life. But, you know, I feel 
you know, it's definitely, you know, Japan's definitely the next move. You know, it's just, I've debated over, you know, going to different places. You know, I've talked about going out to L.A. before. Uh, even talked of going to, you know, a little bit about going to other places within Ohio, too. Um, but I just feel like, you know what, it, it doesn't really matter, like, where I'm at in the States. You know, maybe short of L.A., but L.A. is fucking expensive and a whole nother beast in and of itself. Um, and if I do decide to, to leave Japan, to go back to the States, it would definitely have to be in California somewhere, whether it's L.A. or San Diego or something like that. You know, because I, I just feel like I can't... <laughs> you know go back to america just to come back here to ohio again i just it just doesn't you know, whatever you know i just don't feel that that's where i'm gonna go moving forward i mean unless you know something happens with my family you know like my mom gets sick or something like that then yeah i definitely move back to ohio but you know even if that's the case it'll only be temporary until you know, things get sorted in whatever way that, that, that works out. But, uh, you know, the goal would always be to either move back to Japan or to go back out to California, you know, because I felt like, I felt like of all the states that I've been to, you know, the one I liked was California. Um, I know a lot of people complain about it, you know, the high expenses and everything, and yeah, it's pretty fucking expensive living out there which again is why I don't want to do it right now because you know I'm not exactly pulling in the big bucks when it comes to video editing uh, just yet anyway um, so I think you know eventually as things progress with my video editing and stuff you know maybe LA would be a place for me to go eventually but you know I want to make sure I have a very solid ass portfolio a, a good stream of clients to where I'm not exactly like hunting down a job when I first arrive in LA and I have some money saved away for uh, for that um, so you know as far as when that will be or even if that will be I don't know but uh, to me uh, Japan seems like the place and uh, you know it's where I want to go I just feel like you know I'll be I'll be happy out there, you know, it's just, you know, my, my, uh, my first time in Japan was, uh, was a real trip, man, like, uh, it was, it was in a really weird time in my life, because in a lot of ways, you know, it was like the, you know, the tale of two cities, you know, it was the best of times and the worst of times, so, you know, being out in Japan, I felt in a lot of ways was the best of times and the worst of times, you know, it was the worst of times because I felt so unsatisfied with my job. The job that I had, you know, being stationed out in in Japan versus just like having an English job, an English teaching job or going to school or something like that. You know, it was a lot more stressful than, than doing something like that. And, you know, I would only be in port for maybe a couple weeks at best most of the time. Or if we were in for longer stays, you know, we'd often have to stay longer, you know, during the work days. And, you know, I'd also have duty every, you know, six days or so, depending on the schedule. And, you know, there was, was just a lot of stuff going on. So it was, it was very hectic. And, you know, despite, despite all that, I still was able to make videos of my time out there just two years, you know. And, you know, looking back on them, yeah, they're not the best of videos. You know, I could have done more, I could have done better, could have been better edited and stuff. But, uh, you know, I am glad I even made anything, to be honest, you know, considering how much of a time crunch I was on. Um, and it's always good to go back and look at those videos, to look at that time with me out in Japan. You know, the Andy Japandi series, you know, despite the quality will always be very very near and dear to my heart because that's the series that I've wanted to make ever since I started 
YouTube back in 2006, you know, that was the series I wanted to make. And, you know, looking back on it now, like I said, quality is kind of so-so. Um, but if anything, that goes to show just how much I've improved as, you know, a video editor and just a, a filmmaker, YouTube creator, whatever, in general. You know, and when I do go back to Japan, I want to make, you know, the best videos that I can. And, you know, having learned, excuse me, oof, sorry, the triburpta, <laughs> freaking coffee burps. But anyway, learning what I've learned uh, about filmmaking, you know, over these past couple of years since I've been back in the States, I want to apply that knowledge on, you know, my videos out in Japan. And since I'll be going to school, well, in communications, but, you know, with an emphasis on film production, cinematography, videography, however the school wants to phrase it, because it's phrased a little differently between schools, but basically a communications degree, you know, being as generic as possible <laughs> with that. But, um, you know, I also want to learn you know, more techniques and just be around people, you know, of the industry and just in the field because I feel like, you know, having people with that creative mindset really helps motivate me. And I noticed that with, uh, with a lot of the collabs and stuff that I did while I was out in Japan, you know, going to the, the Hanami party out in Tokyo, um, you know, even doing like the summer gatherings and just a little one-off um, collaborations with YouTubers while I was out there, you know, whether it was even on video or not, because, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of offline, you know, just talking with people that I've had, you know, and just hanging out with, with other like-minded people, and, uh, you know, I think that is what I really miss as well, just being around people who are, you know, really into YouTube and are doing it, you know, they're not just talking a big game you know they're actually out there making videos I'm just sorry there's a bee kind of flying around it's not in the car so but anyway um but yeah just uh being around people that uh have that same mindset about youtube and making videos and stuff and just the options for collaborating to me is really exciting because <laughs> Um, you know, I just, I know more people now and, uh, definitely want to reach out and collaborate with, uh, with more people out in Japan now versus then because my time was very structured and very restricted. And even just what I could make videos on while I was active duty, I felt, you know, it was very restricted as well. You know, it's just, I was always worried about somebody, you know, about like filming something that I probably shouldn't or whatever, you know, it's was, was always a little, you know, so-so about certain things, but uh, not that I was doing anything wrong. It's just, you know, sometimes, you know, there might be like, it's usually just involving drinking, basically. <laughs> we'll just come out and say it. You know, there were some videos where I was drinking, but since I wasn't drinking on camera and I wasn't like slurring my words or anything, I felt it was it's okay and I wasn't really making a big ass out of myself so I think I handled it pretty well um, that's basically what it was and you know if you're part of Seventh Fleet you're not supposed to do that or whatever but you know as long as it's within reason I think and that's something you know my chain of command has told me so plus I'm out now so who the fuck cares <laughs> I can go out and drink whenever I want and that's another thing that's cool about Japan is I can fucking cruise and cruise. Oh, that's going to be so much fun going back to Yokosuka. I just thought of that. Oh, man. Going back to Yokosuka and drinking in the bars after midnight when fucking Liberty Expiration is. Or what if they have, like, alcohol restriction during the time that I'm there. Oh, man. It's going to be so fucking nice. Just sipping at, you know, sitting at the bar, just fucking... Sipping on a chew high while everybody else is like not around or whatever. <laughs> oh man, dude, that's gonna be so nice. And plus, I got I gotta hit up my old uh, old places I used to go to when I would go out to the haunch. I wouldn't go out to the haunch very often because you know that's a place where a lot of military people 
go during their off hours and you know you don't really know who's who without the uniform on so you know I was always afraid of you know maybe shacking up with an officer or getting too familiar with a higher up or something like that you know because sometimes sometimes you can't tell you know even if they're from a different ship you know people talk so you know I was always worried about shit like that and also you know I just like to kind of do my own thing anyway and you know it's one of those things where since a lot of people from work went to that bar like the last thing I want to talk about is fucking work when I'm done for the day I just want to like go home and chill out or go to another spot in Japan and hang out or whatever um, that was just my thing um, but yeah just really looking forward to, to 2019 I think you know 2018 has been a banner year for me as well in different ways like I said earlier you know it's been a banner year for me as far as um, you know doing the freelance video editing thing made a lot of great strides in making more videos for other people um, you know just made better videos for people in fact um, and uh, you know, I've taken a break from college to kind of figure myself out. Um, came back home to Ohio to kind of give myself some time to think as well, to work on some other things. And, you know, doing, doing all these things, which, you know, by themselves, maybe on the surface, don't seem like, like much or like really the direction I want to go. But I feel like, you know, there comes a time where all the the dots connect you know and i feel like that's starting to happen for me you know in going back to japan and uh you know learning all these different um cinematography techniques like i said and you know getting college and stuff all all lined up like i said you know it's getting me in the position to you know go out to japan to uh to start Andy Japandy season two. Oh my god. I have so many ideas for for fucking uh, season two of Andy Japandy. So many ideas. Um, I'm just so excited for it. Um, although, should I call it Andy Japandy season two? Because, like, technically, you know, every year should be a season, right? So, I started Andy Japandy back in 2013. And then 2014, I guess, would be season two. And then season three would be 2015 when I left. So I guess technically it would be season four of Andy Japandi. <laughs> um, but we'll we'll figure out details and stuff like that later. Um, you know, the point being is that the Andy Japandi series is coming back. And it's coming back better than ever. Way better than ever. You know, I just... I have such... I have so many ideas... For places that I want to go and people I want to want to collaborate with you know youtubers and just you know people and places and you know obviously a lot of the the usual touristy parts of Tokyo as well but I also want to go off some more to some more like off the beaten path sort of places you know places in Kanagawa which I fucking love Kanagawa I'm not gonna lie it's what it's probably no, it's not probably it's definitely my favorite prefecture that I've visited so far uh, don't get me wrong, I love southern Japan as well, so definitely want to give give some love to, uh, you know, the, the Kyushu gang. Whoa, fucking B. <laughs> there. <laughs> Rather saying gang is a gang. <laughs> anyway, I told you fucking B. Anyway, um, got to give some love to the Kyushu gang. Okay, anyway. <laughs> You know, going down there and visiting some people out there as well. You know, given the, the opportunity to do so, depending on their schedule and my schedule and stuff. You know, I'd love to love to meet up with, uh, with Tino once again. Met up with him when he and Roman were out in Tokyo. Had a really nice chat. Um, you know, it really helped put put into perspective a lot of uh, different things that I was going through at the time. And you know. I do, I do miss, you know, good old Tino's words of wisdom from time to time. I mean, he's still doing his thing on YouTube, but it's more focused on, 
you know, like English teaching and stuff like that, which I mean, it's fine, but uh, I do miss the old, you know, Tino's Words of Wisdom <laughs> videos, um, just like, you know, Kurt Bell, Softy Papa did back in the day. Um, definitely miss, you know, just kind of the, the elder statesman, you know, gathering everybody around the learning tree, teach them some life lessons. Ah, uh, man. You can make, like, seriously a, a really good channel doing stuff like that. Like a fucking killer-ass YouTube channel doing stuff like that. But, you know, I don't know who would be willing to do something like that. I know, I don't know. <laughs> but I'm just putting that idea out there. So if anybody's watching that wants, you know, to gather people around the learning tree teach them about life experiences and stuff and you have the wealth of knowledge from a life well lived i think you know you do really well on youtube and you know even going back as far as the early days of youtube you had the uh what's his name geriatric 1927 or something like that the uh, the elder the grandpa youtuber who died well, spoiler alert <laughs> died a while ago but uh He's one of the very early YouTubers that made consistent content and just talking about life stories and, you know, giving life advice and stuff like that. And I think, you know, I think I could get get into something like that, but I, I really don't have the amount of, of life experience yet to really give, you know, credibility to what I say. I do have some experience, depending on what it is you're looking for, you know, like military experience, all that kind of stuff, and just going through some some hard times in my life, you know, um, and you know, just the the pursuit of uh, of my dreams, you know, the pursuit of happiness, I guess you could say, because you know, at the end of the day, that's that's what I want. I just want to be happy, you know, and uh, all the you know, chasing the, 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 the degree, you know, transferring colleges, saving up money to go back to Japan, doing the videos when I'm out in Japan and stuff, you know, that's all, you know, just the, the finer details, but overall I just want to be happy, you know, I just want to feel good about myself, feel good about what I'm contributing to this world, and you know i also want to feel like more of myself and that's something i talked about uh in the previous live stream was that i felt more myself I felt like the most myself i've been in years being out in japan because yeah i just felt very unrestricted in some ways you know like when liberty call would go down and i'd head out to tokyo or something for the weekend you know i, I just felt like i didn't have any uh, societal expectations because you know in japan i'm just just another white guy so i'm already weird by default because i'm not like everybody else and so you know being in that environment just somehow gave me the courage and the the fuck it energy as aaron hansen would say to just go out and just be me because you know, I'm already weird, just, you know, if I try to blend in, or just, I'm already weird by default, so it doesn't matter what I do, people are still going to think I'm weird, so fuck it, <laughs> you know? Um, might as well be the most me that I can, and plus I don't have any of the, you know, American judgment and stuff on me. I mean, granted, there might be some people on YouTube that'd be like, hey, you really shouldn't do that, or wear that, or that looks gay, or that, whatever. You know how YouTube comments are. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah. And, you know, that's another thing. Fashion. It's a big one. Um, I know a lot of people may think I look very unfashionable or just kind of plain. But that's kind of the look in rural Ohio. You know, I don't want to... I don't feel like it should stand out too much living here. You know, It's just, you know, it's not the place to do that. Um especially in a small town where people talk and stuff. Whereas in Japan, especially in Tokyo, fuck, there's too many people. Nobody gives a shit about that stuff. And plus, you know, it's 
it's a land of high fashion anyway, so if anything, they may think, oh, that must be fashionable wherever that foreigner's at, so okay. <laughs> um, so it is what it is. And, uh, yeah, just looking forward to, uh, to finally living the life I want to live, you know? It's just, it's not without, you know, hard work, hustle, determination, and you know, all good things will come. You just gotta work for them. And, you know, do the work, get the money, fill out the paperwork, and uh, we're off and running. And, you know, I was even looking today at uh, ticket prices for airfare going, you know, from like Dayton to, you know, Narita or Haneda or whatever. Because sometimes you can get slightly different price between the two. I've heard, I've never been to Haneda before, airport. Um, I've always gone through Narita, but, uh, you know, it's harder to leave Narita airport and get to Tokyo versus Haneda, from what I've been told. Um, but yeah, I've always gone through Narita and you had to take like the Narita Express to get to, you know, the Aminote line and then from there I'd, you know, be able to know my way back home <laughs> from there. Um, so, uh, you know, it'd be nice to try out Haneda, but again, it all depends on price. Like I said, you know, there might be some slight price difference between the two. And if anything, I'd be able to, you know, spend less if I'm able to, like, navigate easier out of the airport in Haneda versus Narita, where I have to take the, the express. So, um, yeah really looking forward to it um, and for those who uh, don't know like what school I'm applying to overseas um, I'm thinking most likely starting off I want to go to Lakeland University um, it's you know it's just a two-year school um, but I do want to transfer out there first to uh, to get my feet wet and uh, you know get some credits and stuff under my belt and then from there, you know, eventually transfer over to Temple University. Um, just because I've heard that Temple is a little bit harder to get into than Lakeland. And, you know, I don't exactly have a whole lot of money to plunk down on application fees every semester on a, on a maybe. You know, I want to make sure that if I apply to a school, I want it to be like a, like a for sure thing. Um, but the one disadvantage is for Lakeland is that the application fee is pretty fucking expensive. It's like about 356 USD. So it's, you know, yuan mon. So 40,000, uh, yeah, 40,000, uh, Japanese yen. Uh, sorry, spaced out there for a sec. But yeah, um, it's pretty high versus Temple, which I think is like maybe 100, 150 USD thereabouts um, and if you're already in the country like since I'll already be in the country I can actually visit the campus and talk with people and you know it'll be a smoother transition for me transferring from school to school versus me applying overseas and having to get the student visa and all this other stuff which I'll already have the student visa they'll just have to uh, switch it over from Lakeland to Temple once I transfer uh, but that's not impossible to do, you know. My friend Jim, you may know him on uh, on the YouTubes as Kid Shoryuken. Uh, he's a vet fellow uh, vet as well, and you know he went to uh, to Lakeland University and then transferred out to Temple, where he's at now. So I know it's definitely possible to do. Um, and I think once I'm out there, I'll talk a bit more in depth with about about doing that. But you know being in two radically different time zones it's kind of hard to uh anyway, it's kind of hard to uh to talk with one another sometimes you know so but yeah man really looking forward to 2019 um putting myself in a good situation to succeed um you know just gonna apply actually tomorrow going to be going to a local school here in the area to talk with them about coming over to uh, take some classes and stuff 
uh, to kind of help raise my GPA and whatnot. And uh, yeah, you know, I think it's gonna be it's gonna be good. You know, um, really looking forward to. Uh, oh, never mind. <laughs> it's like far away. That was a bee coming in. Uh, but yeah, just really looking forward to it. Feeling like I'm finally making some progress in life because I think you know when I get really frustrated with what's going on it's just I just feel like I'm not not making any progress you know I'm not moving forward as a person whether it's you know through career financial uh, you know just personal accomplishments you know I feel like when I'm not moving forward with that that's when you know I start getting mad at things and just frustrated with life in general but you know, I think these are the right moves to make. Really looking forward to being back in Japan, uh, being more of a help to my current clientele, getting more clients, getting more work, you know, and being able to, to use that to better my skills, uh, even maybe using some of it in class as well, uh, depending on, you know, whatever. But, uh, you know, just really looking forward to it. And, uh, yeah, it's feeling good. So, that's about all I want to say in this video. And I know it's, this is uh, kind of dragging a bit, but, you know, it's just, just feeling good. Just kind of, and it, it's not that, like, giddy, like, kid, like, oh, I'm so happy, you know, kind of happiness. It's more of just kind of like a calm, adult happy, like, you know, you finally are on the cusp of achieving your goals, and, uh, you know, it's been a long time coming, went through a lot of shit to get there, but, uh, it's coming. Things are starting to fall into place, and, uh, you know, you just gotta, gotta set your mind on it, man, because, you know, this ain't my first attempt at getting out to Japan, you know, I've been wanting to come back for a while now, but... I was always kind of turned away from it just based on the cost, my grades, this, that, X, Y, Z reason, you know, stuff like that. And so I was kind of been like, well, I'll try to make it as best I can here and then eventually get out there. And, you know, it's just a lot of talking myself out of it. But, you know, I just, I came to the conclusion that, you know what, I'm just not happy here where I'm at. You know, I try to make the best of it, try to get a better job, you know, even if I improve living situation, all that other stuff. It's just, it's not that deep down satisfaction that I get from, you know, studying abroad. Um, you know, and it felt like while I was out there, I was just on such a, such a good journey of personal growth. I was getting to know myself a lot more. I was getting to learn what it was like to be in a, you know, to really be an American, being outside of the, uh, the American bubble and all that, you know, I just, I felt, felt a sense of pride in, in what I did and stuff, and, you know, to try to be a good representative of the country, where there's so many others who aren't doing that, um, you know, I want to show that there are good guys out there, you know, and uh, aside from that, you know, I just, like I said, just want to be happy. <laughs> and I feel like going back out to Japan will make me happy. Or at the very least, put me in a position to get to that point. And, you know, the way I see it, you know, I'm not exactly missing out on anything leaving here. Because, you know, I just feel like this this ain't the uh, the environment for me to be in to succeed. You know, it's just kind of a sleepy rural town not a whole lot going on you know it's just kind of a last stop for a lot of people you know they grow up here have kids here and they die here and that's about it you know <laughs> some of the kids may go off to college elsewhere in the area you know like BSU or University of Dayton or OSU or something like that um, so they may get their outside experience but uh, a lot of them end up coming back here to have kids, get a job, and then just die. And, you know, this ain't the place for me to do that. 
So nothing against them or what they want to do. It's just I I know it's it's best for me in this same chief. So anyway, <laughs> it's kind of a long-winded way of, of me saying. With all that said, this is Liam Sun signing for now. Thanking you guys for tuning in once again to these long ass live streams. I'm getting a lot of positive feedback about them actually. So I'm really glad you guys are liking them. And I've been able to do them on a fairly consistent basis too because, you know, of other stuff I don't really want to talk about. But, uh, you know, I do, you know, have some time to, uh, to put these out, if anything. So, anyway, guys, thanks for tuning in as always. Uh, more stuff coming up. Um, in the in the future, um, and things like that. So, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye.